Hello everybody, this is a video about multiplying fractions. I would like you to take notes on this as we go. You can use them for working on the worksheets or on future quizzes as well when we come to that. Okay, here's the learning goal. Uh, again, you don't have to write these down, although I would love it if you put a title and a date on your work so that you can keep it organized even though we're not actually at school at the moment. So the learning goal, we're learning how to multiply regular and mixed fractions, and we're going to investigate something called reciprocals, which I'll talk about at the end. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Okay, on we go. Multiplying regular and improper fractions uses the same general steps. Um, and all you need to do, just follow along here, so you multiply the numerator by the numerator, so you're multiplying top times top, to use the uh, non-math lingo. Uh, multiply denominator by denominator, so bottom times bottom, and reduce to lowest terms if necessary. So just take a look when you're done to see if, that, if that's necessary. So we do 1 times 3, which gets us 3. Surprise, surprise. 4 times 5 gets us 20. That's it. Done. This is a little bit easier, generally speaking, than the adding and subtracting of fractions. So I hope you enjoy this one as much as is possible to enjoy fractions. I like fractions. Maybe you don't feel the same way, though. Now, uh, the second one here, so we do the same thing. 7 times 2 equals 14. 3 times 9 equals 27. And in both these situations, it's already in lowest terms, so there's nothing else you can do with those. I just want to note as well that generally speaking on everything we've done with fractions so far, we, we've uh, not usually been changing the denominator uh, unless we're finding a common denominator. Uh, but with these ones, you definitely are changing the denominator. Okay, so whatever the two denominators multiply to get, that's your new denominator. Okay, hopefully that's fairly straightforward for everybody. Um, one tricky thing that comes up a little bit when we are using these is what to do when you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number. And basically what you do with that is you just simply convert the, um, the whole number to a fraction over one. So you literally just put it over one because 4 over 1 as a fraction is equivalent to just the number 4. Okay, we just would never normally write that if we were using the number 4, because that would be silly. Um, now, so once we've got our... Uh, once you write it like that... Oh, sorry, having a little trouble with my smartboard software here. Anyone who's ever seen me do anything with a smart board will not be shocked that that's happening. Um, so we do 2 times 4 to get 8, and then 3 times 1 to get 3. So our answer to that one is, uh, is just 3 on the bottom. Okay, I would really like you to be in the habit of writing that over 1. Even if you can do it in your head, this will be a great way of just remembering that you do in fact have to do that so that you aren't, uh, for example, multiplying the 2 times the 4, and then by accident also multiplying the 3 times the 4 to get 12 on the bottom or something like that. Okay, so please write 4 over 1, put that 1 on the bottom. Okay, so same thing with this example down here. We are just writing, so 6 times 1 twelfth equals 6 over 1. And then you just do the straightforward multiplication. So 6 times 1 will equal 6, of course, on the top. 1 times 12, 12 on the bottom. Now, in this case, you can actually reduce that to lowest terms. Um, and that, as hopefully you've noticed, that can reduce down to 1 half. And then you'd want to leave that as your final answer. Okay, so on we go in hopefully an effort to keep my video relatively brief. Next, uh, multiplying mixed fractions. Uh, basically, you do exactly the same thing, except one step first, convert your mixed fractions to improper fractions first. Okay, do not, please, in this grade level, try to multiply mixed fractions. Okay, there's an extra level of complication to it that uses a process that you probably won't use till grade nine. Um, so 
Uh, please don't do it. If you're really interested, let me know and I'll explain it to you. But otherwise, convert it to an improper fraction and go from there. So why don't you pause the movie and do a quick review of how to convert from mixed fractions to improper fractions. Okay, go. Alright, I'll assume you did that and that you aced it and you got everything just right. But we'll go through it just in case uh, you had some trouble with it. So 3 times 2 plus 1 would give us 8 over 3. Wait a minute. That is some shoddy math, Mr. Shirley. Um, okay, so we're going to just cross that out. 3 times 2 is 6. And if you add 1, you get 7 there. I hope some of you caught that one as you're going through. Um, this is why I usually look over the math before I start these videos, and I did in this case too, but somehow missed that. Good thing we caught it now though. Uh, the next one, so you do 5 times 3, which is 15, and add 2, which should give us 17. Hey, three cheers for Mr. Shirley. 17 over 5, and... Um, Remember, in these cases, when you're you're doing this conversion to improper, denominator stays the same until you get to the last part. Okay, and uh, then what you're going to need to do is uh, you do uh, numerator times numerator, numerator, denominator times denominator. So you get incorrectly in my case. Um, let's just uh, we're gonna. Sorry, my pen shortcuts are not working very well in this video. So we would do 7 times 17, which should be 119 over 15. And you can just take my word for it that that does not reduce to anything if you'd like. Uh, but feel free to test me on that one and uh, you can see if you can find something that reduces to. Okay, but again, just to quickly review, always convert it to an improper fraction first. Always, always. And please just leave your answers as improper fractions. I like improper fractions. I would rather see improper fractions. I know the word improper makes it sound like you shouldn't be using them, uh, but that's just not how fractions work. So please, improper fractions are just uh, much easier in my opinion and uh, will result in less complication for doing anything else with that number, uh, any of the other operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Okay, so just leave it improper and uh, reduce if you can, but leave it improper. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to look at uh, is what is called reciprocals. Okay, now the definition of the reciprocal you're going to find actually makes it much more complicated than what it really is. So two numbers whose product is one are called reciprocals. So basically what you're looking for is a number here that you could multiply two-thirds by that would equal one or would reduce down to one if you reduced it to lowest terms. Okay, so what I would do if we were in class is I would give you a few minutes to try and figure out what went in that box to try to actually figure out how to make this, the two-thirds, multiply to get the number one or something or, or a fraction that can reduce down to one. Okay, so please pause the video for a moment and give it a try. See if you can find what it is. I'll wait a few seconds and then go ahead. Okay, so hopefully you all found out what that was. It's a little tricky though, so don't feel too bad if you didn't. Um, what you're going to find is that the number, in, in order to multiply two thirds by something to get an answer of one or something that reduces to one, what you're gonna need to multiply it by is the inverse of the number or the, this is what's called the reciprocal. So two thirds times three over two. And that's going to equal 6 over 6, okay? Because remember, we do top times top to get 6, bottom times bottom to get 6. And any number over itself like that, okay, always equals 1, okay? It could be 6 over 6 or 50 over 50 or 1 million over 1 million. It will reduce to 1. So all you're doing when you're finding the reciprocal is you are finding the number that is basically your original fraction except flipped over. Okay, so we'll do one more example here and then I'm going to let you try the bottom two just for a moment before you just take my answers. So one third and then we want that flipped over so that's three over one. 
And then when you multiply that through top times top, bottom times bottom, you end up with 3 over 3, which again can reduce down to 1. Okay? And so I, I hope you're seeing the pattern here that if I ask you to find the reciprocal, it's just the number flipped over. So please take a moment, just pause the video and try the last two questions and see how you do. The last one's got an extra, extra step you need to do in it. Okay, so please give those a try. And on we go one last time. Uh, so 5 over 7, you're wanting to multiply that times. Surprisingly, 7 over 5, you just flip the number over. And then 5 times 7 is 35. 7 times 5 is 35. And again, that reduces down to 1. Uh, one thing to just note as a way of error checking as you're going through these problems, please make sure if you're multiplying a number by its reciprocal, so it's just literally flipped over like this one, that you end up with the same thing on the numerator and the denominator. Um, if you don't, just go back and check your math. You really should uh, end up with the same thing. Now with this second one here, Remember that when we do anything with multiplying whole numbers, we just put the whole number over 1 and then um, multiply it as usual. So 8 over 1, and then of course the reciprocal would be 1 over 8, and that equals 5 over 7. <laughs> I bet I shocked a whole bunch of people with that answer, including myself. Mr. Shirley. Okay, 8 over 8 equals... One. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. Great way to end off this slideshow. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to it at least somewhat. And um, please try out the worksheets and let me know during our weekly meetings if you get stumped on anything and you're not sure where to go with it. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.